everyone and welcome to day 27 of our RV10 build. Today we are continuing work on the horizontal stabilizer and boy are we ever because this was a full day of working out in the garage so we got quite a lot done. We actually got the entire uh, assembly attached to the skins, everything match drilled and then pulled apart but I'll be going over a lot of the different stuff that we encountered while we were building that might hopefully help you out. So let's get started. We started off today by getting the skin set up in the cradles that we made in the previous days and now you have to start getting the assembly put into the skins and you start by taking out the nose ribs off of the front spar assembly and putting them individually into um, the skins. Probably because I would imagine this would be very difficult to do if the spar with the inspar ribs was still attached. So. Um, just like with the vertical stab, this can be a little bit tricky trying to get those skins lined up with all the holes because it's a very, very tight fit. Um, but make sure to do like in section 5.2 of the instructions where it goes over the rib flange faceting to make sure that you smooth out the, uh, the edges there of the flanges of the nose ribs so that it sits really nice and flush and smooth and you don't end up with any um, little dense where the edges of the flanges are hitting the skin and you're also less likely than to scratch the inside of the skin. So it was a, a little bit tricky but worked out and after you get those in now you're supposed to get the rest of that front front, front spar assembly into um, the skins there. One thing we noticed here that wasn't specifically in the instructions is that you should remove the two HS1004 four trimmed flanges. These are the two inboard inspar ribs on either side uh, before you go and try and connect the front spar uh, assembly to the nose ribs. This is because Throughout the rest of the horizontal stabilizer, the inspar ribs and the nose ribs don't line up immediately adjacent to each other. They're kind of offset a little bit, except for there on the inboard edge of both of so, both of the sides, the nose rib and the inspar rib go uh, and meet at the same four holes there on the web of the um, front spar. So if you have the Clecos in it, whether they're on the front or the back side, um, you're not going to be able to get the spar to sit down on top of those nose ribs. So uh, it's, it's just a matter of the Clecos will be fighting with you and in the way. So take the Clecos out um, or whenever you take the nose ribs off to put them uh, into the skin, make sure to leave off those two um, inboard most inspar ribs until after you get the spar assembly in and then attach them on top. Otherwise those Clecos there are just gonna get in the way and you're not gonna be able to get it on there properly. You can see here uh, a little bit about what I was talking about before with the advantages of having our flexible cradle. It was pretty nice to be able to move the entire uh, setup there back and forth to help look inside while we're trying to align the uh, holes on both sides with the different ribs. It also made it a lot easier um, to pull the skins back for 8-9 step one, where you are inserting the stringer assemblies uh, into those inspar ribs and up against the skins. If you go with the rigid cradle that's in the instructions, uh, you'll have to do just like what it spells out for you. It says that you have to lift the whole assembly out of both of the cradles and pull both of the skins back in order to insert the stringer assemblies into the notches in the ribs because of how high that rigid cradle goes and because it's holding the skin tight against the entire assembly there. Whereas having this more flexible setup where there's nothing pinching the, uh, the the skin right up against the assembly, it was easy for us to just go and pull both of the skins back and get those stringer assemblies in there and we didn't have to lift the whole um, setup out of both of those cradles in order to try and squeeze it in there. So that was something that was uh, really nice to have and again just another advantage there with this um, the setup that we certainly enjoyed. When you are clecoing the stringer assemblies to the skins, make sure that you trap the little 
uh, flange on the inspar ribs as well. So you have not at this point clecoed the ribs to the skins, and so those inspar ribs might not be properly lined up just yet, but there is a little flange on those four, it looks like, I think, on the, the inboard side of both halves of that horizontal stabilizer and there's a the little flange on each of those that you need to make sure to catch inside of the uh in the side of that whole assembly so it should be the skin the stringer assembly and then the little flange on the inspar ribs uh we noticed when we were putting it together so i went hmm i think we missed something and uh you'll figure it out when you go to clico the ribs to the skins anyway but just something to keep an eye out for when you're putting the stringer assemblies in so you don't have to go back and try to fix it afterwards. A random little tip, we found that keeping the basket of Clecos in the little gap there between the two halves of the horizontal stabilizer was really helpful. It made it easy for us to be able to reach in and get Clecos no matter which side of the table we were on or which part of the uh, the horizontal stabilizer we were trying to put together uh, and instead of having to chase them around the table having it right there in that little gap just made it nice and easy to reach so just a tiny little tidbit that was so cool though doesn't it yeah you know what we'll be the bad day taking it all apart again you know. when we got to 8-9 step 3 with the hs 1016 part this is a piece here that you are attaching to the two stringer assemblies as well as the two inboard inspar ribs. And the way that it has you doing it in the instructions is you first attach the rear spar assembly to the inspar ribs and then you go and attach this HS1016 uh, and now you're supposed to match drill it. And it suggests in the instructions to use an angle drill which we didn't have. And so looking at everything, we're like, hmm, um, what can we do and how can we get to this easier? And the answer for us was take the rear spar assembly off, remove the clecos that were connecting the inboard inspar ribs to the skin that were above the... Um, the stringer assembly so that allowed us now to be able to go in with a 12 inch drill bit and we could move those uh, inspar ribs back just enough to then give us the vantage point to drill perpendicular to the the setup there with the stringer assemblies and the hs 1016 and match drill all of those holes without any type of problem um, and then we were able to use the little Pan Am drill with a regular drill bit to squeeze, it was able to fit in and squeeze in between the two halves of the horizontal stabilizer to match drill the holes on the HS1016 to the, um, to the two inboard inspar ribs. When you get to this point, it might be worth considering doing the match drilling on the HS1016 in the stringer assemblies prior to putting the rear assembly on, just because you can see, again, you have a much better uh, access to it that way. These are all the Clecos we have left. So that's how many, that's how many we used, all of these. <laughs> We were using a lot of Clecos uh, trying to put everything together on this much larger part. I mean, this is substantially bigger than the rudder or the vertical stabilizer that we've done so far. I think that we added about 100 more Clecos to our order than what came in the kit that we bought from Cleveland Tool. And I think we've since ordered about another 100 or so. Um, just something to keep in mind. Instead of having to worry about trying to be really sparse with the number of Clecos that you had or how to spread them out or space them out, I think the kit we bought had, I think it was 250 in it. And then so we added, I believe it was about another 100. So we were at 350. Um, and we used darn near all of those putting this whole setup together. Just something to keep in mind. After everything was Clico together, we got out both our little Pan Am drill as well as our other drill and started match drilling with each of us taking a side. So again, this was a really nice thing to have um, both of us working on it and each of us easily take a side and just like stay out of each other's way but get a lot done. 
Here you can start to see what I mentioned in the previous video about the two by fours that I used to make the cradle being a bit too wide. You can see how many holes each of those two by fours is covering on the skin. They blocked about, I think it was like five holes each. Um, and so it just made it a little bit tricky. Uh, it wasn't impossible. We were able to work around it and, um, and still get all those holes match drilled. But uh, this is where you can see, hopefully, where having a thinner piece of wood to make this cradle would have been a lot more helpful and it would have blocked a lot less um, of the, the holes there that we were trying to match drill. This is also an advantage with that rigid cradle design that's in the instructions because since you make that with a thin piece of plywood, you can see that there wouldn't be as much of a problem with the little thin piece of plywood blocking any of the holes that you're trying to Clico. So again, advantages and disadvantages to both setups. You are going to be giving a really good workout to whichever hand you are using those Clico pliers with because they're, it's going to get quite a workout. You are putting all of these Clicos in to assemble the entire horizontal stabilizer. Then you're gonna be moving all of those Clicos into the other holes so that you can now match drill the ones that had the Clicos in them previously. And then you're gonna be using it to take the Clicos out when you're all done. And as you can see, there's quite a few holes here. So this is an, another day where it was really great having our pneumatic uh, Clico gun to help out uh, as your arms started to get tired from squeezing those Clico pliers over and over and over again. Um, really nice to have that. There are a lot of holes and it does recommend having some sort of a pattern to help you keep track of which ones you've drilled and help make sure that you don't miss anything. We did, uh, uh, I don't remember if we did it for the entire BART, but at one point what we were doing was um, putting a little mark on the blue vinyl next to the holes that we drilled to help keep track of which ones we had, uh, we'd already done, just to make sure that we didn't miss anything. Because again, with the number of Clicos we had and the number of holes we had, um, you can see along the top where the rear spar assembly is connected to the skin. We had a Clico in like every third hole. We didn't have enough to do it in every other hole. So that's where it started to get interesting when, okay, now you've gotten every third hole, you've done those two in the middle, you're moving the Clicos, and now it's like, okay, well, which ones were, were, were every third hole before <laughs> trying to remember which one's up there that you had the Clicos in previously. So having just a little mark on the vinyl uh, helped make it a little bit easy. Getting back to those holes there that were blocked by the cradles that I'd mentioned earlier with the two by four, it was really easy to work around this. What we just did is um, I just held up one end of the horizontal stabilizer while Tyler went in there and match drilled those four or five holes. Um, it worked out no problem. Again, took just a couple minutes and, and got all those match drilled. So again, it did work out with our setup with the two by fours. It's just, if you were to build this yourself, I would recommend again, still going with something a little bit skinnier. All in all, uh, it ended up taking us about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to end up match drilling the entire setup here with the horizontal stabilizer with two people with the two different drills going. So really happy again that we had both of us and were able to knock this out twice as fast. Once you've got everything match drilled, now you're gonna start ripping it all apart. That's the heartbreaking part, right? You see all the work here in front of you got completed and now you get to break it down. And that took only about 20 minutes to rip the whole thing apart. But one thing is to really, really, really make sure that you double check that everything is labeled before you're removing it. Uh, it goes over in the book that before you start match drilling and assembling this, there is no difference between the two skins. There is no up or down or right or left like there are with some of the other parts. So they're interchangeable until you start match drilling and getting them matched up to those spars. So just make sure to get everything labeled really well. Which skin attaches to which side of the spar, um, the alignment of the two spars, numbering the different ribs, the nose ribs and the in-spar ribs so that you know where they go on the spar. The stringer assemblies, make sure that you mark which long stringer goes with which short stringer and make sure you mark which stringer 
assembly goes against which side of the skin. Um, even the little HS1016, which side goes against which inspar rib. So there's a lot of little parts like that where again, it's there's no directionality when you put it together. It's only after you've now started match drilling it that it's gotten alignment. So um, we did find a few spots as we were doing it where we're like, oops, wait a minute, make sure to mark this. So just again, make sure to double check that you've got everything labeled really well before you take it all apart. <laughs> And now we're set to the task of deburring all the holes in every part. The camera died near the end. It either ran out of space or battery, I'm not sure. But in total today, we ended up spending at least about six hours working on the entire thing to assemble it all, to drill it, to disassemble it, and to deburr everything with the two people. But really productive day, got a lot done and excited about getting the whole thing actually all put together and getting it riveted together soon. So that about wraps it up for today. On another note, I just wanted to let y'all know I have created an Instagram account plain dot lady where you guys can actually keep up with our current progress on the plane like i've mentioned it takes me time to put together these videos to go back through um what the experience was and try and figure out what uh kind of interesting little situations we found ourselves in or what kind of information would be helpful for y'all and i thought that by having the instagram then i can now share and keep you more up to date on where we actually are with the build that doesn't require as much uh, effort to just kind of post a current update status so again that's plain dot lady on instagram if you're interested i hope you've been finding these videos helpful please leave me a comment down below let me know it, uh, what you think what you find to be the most helpful and again if you have any tips or tricks they're always appreciated but thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to follow along as we build our RV10 and for more videos like this. And make sure to hit that little bell icon so that you get notified anytime I post a new video. Stay safe, everyone.